You're listening to The Divorce and Your Money Show, the number one podcast that discusses the complex business of divorce. I'm your host, Sean Lehman, MBA and certified divorce financial analyst. Social security, that is what we're talking about in this episode. And I'm not going to teach you about social security. I have the top expert in the United States on social security. In fact, he wrote the best-selling book on social security. His name is Larry Kotlikoff. He is a professor, a social security extraordinaire, and knows just about everything about social security that you can imagine. And this is an episode that everyone should listen to. And, you know, social security, I, I didn't know a lot about it going into this interview until I had read his book. Social security is an extraordinarily complex topic. In fact, you know, Social Security isn't just a monolithic thing. It has many, many, many different facets to it. There's not even just one type of Social Security. It encompasses many different types of programs. And not only is it important for you in retirement, it can actually be the largest source of income for many of you listening when it comes to your retirement. But more than that, is there are very special rules when it comes to a divorce situation. And in this interview, we just barely scratched the surface on Social Security with Larry Kotlikoff. And when you listen to this interview, you're going to hear Larry speak. And and Larry is very, very sharp and knows his stuff. And if you listen carefully, you are going to realize just how complicated Social Security is. So what I want you to do is I want to make sure that you get Larry Kotlikoff's book. It's called Get What's Yours. We're going to get into some of the topics in here. And you're going to see that this is a subject that you don't want to miss. And also a subject that you really should be thinking about when it comes to your retirement and planning for the future. And some important things that you should be aware of as you are either considering or going through divorce. A couple of notes is if you go to the website, divorceinyourmoney.com, and you go to the podcast page, and if you click on this episode, I'm going to have a full transcript of this interview. Larry is so sharp. He's one of those people that you can give the highest compliment to when it comes to speaking, and that is he speaks in paragraphs. And not only does Larry speak in paragraph, he speaks in very detailed paragraphs because he knows the rules of social security so well. And he's just so good at explaining all of this information. I want you to look at the transcript for this episode on the website because it's going to be very helpful for you as you get into it. And the other thing is, is this is really complicated. I I, I can't stress it enough is, is I even say this in the interview, but if you think divorce is complicated, just wait until you start learning about social security. So, you know, you should really pay attention, get a notebook and think about this thing because this is an area when you plan for your future and when you think about divorce that often gets forgotten. So without further ado, here is my episode with Larry. Today on the show, I have with me Larry Kotlikoff. He is a professor of economics at Boston University and also the author of Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maximizing Out Your Social Security. Larry, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me so much. Larry, I thought divorce was tough until I read your book about social security. So why don't we start with some basics for the listener audiences? What is social security? Well, social security is a program to try and provide income to people in retirement and also for disabled people and for people that are survivors. So it's a form of social insurance and it's a compulsory form of social insurance where we force people to pay in taxes and then we give them back benefits when they're retired, when they are survivors, you know, widows or widowers or surviving children, or when they get divorced, if they were married for 10 years or more, you can get divorce benefits spouse benefits and divorce widow or widower benefits. So partly it's a um, forced saving system and partly it's a forced life insurance system and partly it's a forced disability insurance system because if you become disabled, you can also collect 
disability benefits. So it's forcing us to make sure that we buy insurance. And I think that the rationale for all that is that we're all concerned about each other at some level. We're, we're all altruistic. And so therefore, helping our fellow man is really kind of a public good. It's something we all get pleasure from. If uh, We don't want to see uh, large numbers of starving older people or large numbers of disabled people that can't or eating cat food. So by having the government organize this, we get around the free riding problem where it's easy for one person to say, well, let Joe over there take care of Frank, who's disabled. And Joe over there says, well, let uh, I'm not going to take care of him. You take care of him. And Frank doesn't get taken care of. So that's uh, why economists view see this as a situation where you need to have the government involved in forcing people to contribute so that somebody like Frank, who does become disabled, actually has money to eat with. And it's just like defense system. We, we wouldn't have, I uh, think that Joe should go build his missile. He won't build it. He'll ask, he'll say, well, let the guy over there build the missile uh, and defend me with his missile. And uh, the missile will never get built. So when you really get down to the essence of where social security is coming from, it's coming from the fact that it's a public good and so that's one quick thing to say about Social Security. But another important thing to say is that the system has been run or financed on a pay-as-you-go Ponzi scheme method, where, or I actually call it take-as-you-go, because what's happened is that through the years, we've continued to raise the benefit levels paid out to older people, and we've taken money from younger people and said, don't worry, you'll get yours. You'll be able to take your money from the next generation when you're older. And that's very much of a Ponzi scheme. That's a chain letter. And it's a corrupt way of financing, and it's an immoral way of financing a policy like this. And so we've left it. Social Security is terribly uh, indebted in the sense that it's got a unfunded liability of about $32 trillion. It's about 33% underfinanced. We've got Medicare, which cannot pay for its spending through time. It's terribly underfinanced. Medicaid, the same thing. So these social insurance programs have been run on the cheap and at the risk of our children and at the cost to our children. So the whole country at this point is fiscally broke, bankrupt, really is the right term to, to use because uh, of these programs and other spending that the government does that it hasn't paid for, including defense spending. I think that makes a lot of sense. And Let's bring it back for a second. So the way that people on an everyday basis kind of pay for Social Security is through FICA, or is that right, or, or how does that work? Yes, everybody pays through FICA, but only about most of Medicare's costs are being covered by, not by FICA taxes, but uh, or by Medicare Part B premiums or Part D premiums, but by general revenues. So Medicare, which is a part of Social Security, uh, that's the HI health insurance or hospital insurance part of Social Security. That is being paid by general revenues to a large extent. Social Security itself, we have general revenues coming in there too because we have taxation of Social Security benefits. And that taxation appears on our, on our federal income tax returns. And those tax dollars go over to the Social Security system. And when you say taxation of Social Security benefits, that means when someone starts receiving Social Security or that gets taxed as income. Yeah. If your income is too high, it doesn't have to be that much that high. You start having 50% of your Social Security benefits included in your taxable income or your what's called adjusted gross income. And then if your income gets even a little bit higher, it be becomes 85%. So, so in the limit, 85% of your benefits can be fully taxed under the federal income tax. And through time, that's going to happen to all our kids because the thresholds beyond which our incomes are subject to Social Security benefit taxation, those thresholds are not indexed for inflation. So through time, as every all the prices rise and wages rise and Social Security benefits rise and other incomes, source of incomes rise, we're going to have everybody above these thresholds, above the second threshold, the 85% threshold, and everybody will be having 85% of their benefits subject to federal income taxation. So this is just another way in which we are expropriating our kids, leaving fiscal time bombs for our children. And some of these new uh, Medicare high-income taxes, for example, 
also the the thresholds are not subject to taxation. So everybody will be facing them. Uh, another example here is Medicare Part B premiums. There's a premium for people with low income, and then there's a premium for people that have had high income. And the threshold beyond which you have to pay this much higher Medicare Part B premium, well, that's also not an index for inflation. So all this stuff is kind of stuck into the tax code in a way to come back and bite people. And it's going to mostly bite our children. It's p- being put in by older older people because they don't want to have to pay the bill and they're happy to leave it to the kids. And they know full well that they're doing this when they do it. No, I, I think that makes sense. And it's definitely a lot to think about. You mentioned earlier divorce and there's different types of social security benefits. Given this is a divorce in your money show, why don't we discuss some of the divorce benefits? And so just starting with a basic question is, is what types of benefits are there for people who are divorced? You mentioned something about a 10-year rule. Yeah. First of all, you have to be mar- have been married for 10 or more years to be eligible to get any uh, divorcee social, social security benefits. So you can be married 10 years in one day. That's just great. You don't have to live with a person. You could, for example, get separated at after seven years, whether formally separated or informally, you live in two different countries if you wanted. As long as you're legally married, Social Security will think you're legally married and accept that you are. You're doing nothing illegal. And then on your uh, 10th anniversary, you go and get divorced. For anybody who's close to 10 years into a marriage, you know, five or more years into a marriage, they should think many times over before they get divorced, especially if they're partner is a high earner because a much higher earner than they are, whether it's right, you know, in the last couple of years or likely to be a very high earner in the future, it could be that you're married to a, a dental student and you've been married for eight years and then he runs off with his hygienist. Well, you're angry, you want an immediate divorce, but it's much smarter potentially if you're a school teacher and he's going to be earning several hundred thousand dollars a year, it's potentially much smarter for you to just cool it for two years and live apart and then go formally get married. Uh, Sorry, get divorced. And then you'll be eligible for divorcee spousal benefits. And when he passes away, you'll be eligible for divorcee survivor benefits, widow widow benefits. Got it. And so what happens in that case? So, So what is the divorcee benefit in general that you would be able to have if you're married over 10 years? Let's say you were somebody who um, earned no money on their own, and you're married to somebody who does have Social Security earnings history of at least 40 quarters covered, so they're fully covered by Social Security, and you reach you reach your full retirement age. That's currently 66. It's going up to 67. Uh, well, you can collect, starting at that full retirement age, you can collect half of your ex's full retirement benefit. Not half of what your ex actually collects, but half of what your ex uh, would have collected had he started his or her full retirement benefit benefits at full retirement age. Now, if you take your uh, your divorcee spouse benefits earlier at 62, you you would get 75% of half of his full retirement benefits. So you would get a reduction in your uh, divorce spouse benefit. A third point is that if you wait beyond your full retirement age, there's no advantage because your divorce spousal benefit won't get any bigger. If you take it before full retirement age, it will, it will be smaller. So there's a reason and an advantage to waiting to collect it, but no advantage after full retirement age. A fourth point is that under the new law that was passed in uh, November of 2015, anybody that was under 62 on January 2nd, 2016, they're not grandfathered. So what's going to happen then is if whenever they go and try and collect a divorce spousal benefit, they'll be forced to take their own retirement benefit. And that's called deeming. And so no matter whether they take the divorce spousal benefit at 62 or 63 or at full retirement age, or even at 68, whatever age they do this, they'll be forced to take their, their retirement benefit as well. And what Social Security will do is give you essentially the larger of the two benefits. It's not exactly that formula, but it's close to the larger of the two benefits. So if you're 
somebody that has earned a lot of money, then your divorce spousal benefit will basically be worthless because you'll never collect it. You can go and apply for it, but you'll then be forced to take your retirement benefit. It will be larger and then they'll just give you that. And if you decide to try and do it this early, your retirement benefit will be reduced. So you get your reduced retirement benefit as opposed to waiting till 70. Right now, if you wait till 70 relative to taking your benefit at 62, your retirement benefit, the benefit's going to be 76% higher because the retirement benefit is reduced if you take it at 62, but also if you wait between 66 for retirement age right now and 70, it's increased by 32% due to something called the delayed retirement credits. So these delayed retirement credits apply to your retirement benefit, but not to your divorcee spouse benefits or to widower benefits. But anyway, you so you might, under the new law, if you're a pretty good earner compared to your ex, have just lost all your potential spouse, divorce spouse benefits based on this new law that comes thanks to the combination of the Democrats and Republicans getting together with no discussion or debate and passing this without anybody getting to see the bill. Really, it was part of the Budget Act of 2015. And we can discuss the reasons for why it was initiated and passed. But anyway, even that person who's not going to get divorcee spousal benefits may still get divorcee survivor benefits, uh, widower, widower benefits, because that, the benefit there is 100% of what the ex was receiving in their check, with one exception that the formula is somewhat different if the ex took their retirement benefit before full retirement age. But that part aside, so if, let's assume that the ex takes their benefit at 70 at the highest possible level, then, and you were married to that person for 10 or more years, well, when that person dies, you can start collecting a widow's benefit as early as age 60, and if you're dis- disabled as early as age 50. And then if you take it at 60, it will be reduced by about 30% relative to taking it at age for reti- at full retirement age. So, in that case, you know, it could be that divorce widow's benefit or widower benefit exceeds your own retirement benefit. But unlike with the spousal benefit, a divorce spousal benefit, when, we're, when we are talking about a divorced widower widower benefit, there's no deeming. So you can take your divorce widow or widower benefit first at age 60, for example, and then take that for 10 years till age 70, and then take your on retirement benefit. That's interesting. There's some tricks and ways to maximize that benefit if you're you're smart about it. Yeah, or you could flip it. You could take your uh, retirement benefit at age 62. That's the earliest date you can take your retirement benefit. Take that up through full retirement age and take your widow's benefit or widower benefit, divorce widow or divorce widower benefit. Or you, again, if your ex took his, his or her retirement benefit before full retirement age, in that circumstance where it behooves you to take your retirement benefit first, you'd want to take your divorce widow or widower benefit before full retirement age, maybe a year or two before. And you have to use advanced software to figure out exactly which, when to do it to maximize your benefits because this other formula kicks in that relates to, uh, that determines the divorce widow or widower benefit in the case that the ex takes their retirement benefit early. So it's pretty complicated, and only a really sophisticated computer software can figure out how to help you and advise you here. And I do want to mention uh, that the purpose of this discussion is not for me to hawk uh, any products, but I do have a software company. So I, I do want to tell people about, for a minute, uh, about the Please. software that's available because it will help them. And it's very inexpensive. It's only $40. And I personally don't get any money from my company. I run it from my perspective as a nonprofit and and have been for two decades. So I'm not personally benefiting. If we make more revenue, I'll be able to give my my great employees a raise. But that's the only thing that I'll see happen if we get more revenue in. But here we have a program that's called Maximize My Social Security. It's at MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. If you have your ex's earnings history, you can plug that in. If you don't, you can just plug in the full retirement uh, divorce benefit, divorce spouse benefit, and the program will understand what the divorce widow benefit is from that information. You'll also enter your own 
earnings history, which you can grab just from the Social Security website and cut and paste it into our program. We describe how to do that. Or you can, in some cases, just tell us what benefits they've told you you'll get for retirement age. You know, within a, about a minute or half a minute, the program will come back and say, we've looked at 20, 30,000 different strategies for you. And here's the optimal thing to do with respect to taking what benefits when. And if you're old enough to have met this grandfathering deadline that was part of the 2015 new law, the program will know that because of the questions it asked you and will figure out the best thing for you to do given that you're grandfathered. If you're too young to have been grandfathered, it will know the best thing to do for you in that circumstances. If you're widowed, it will know what to do. Anyway, there's this great tool, uh, MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. Tens of thousands of people have used it. It's really, I think it's the most accurate software around, and it handles people that are disabled or have disabled children or young children. So there's that tool available to them. Excellent. And, you know, when we think about all these calculations, while you're still married or in the divorce process and maybe want to use a tool like Maximize My Social Security or just start to get a handle on this information, what should people be thinking about? What information will they need that they should probably start gathering today while they have access to everything instead of, you know, for some people, it might be 20 or 30 years in the future before they start thinking about these things. Or, and for others, it might be a, a year or two around the corner. So, so what kind of information does someone need to gather right now? I would keep a track of my Social Security earnings history because who knows what the Russians will do at some point in terms of wiping out all the records electronically that Social Security has. So I would print out my Social Security earnings history and do keep doing that every year. And if you can get that for your ex, do that as well and give them yours because your ex can collect on you just like you can collect on him uh, or her, assuming you're both married 10 years formally. And I'd also, uh, another resource, I have a co-authored book called Get What's Yours, the Revised Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. You mentioned that, Sean, at the top of the hour there, top of the show. This book became a New York Times bestseller. It sold about a quarter of a million copies so far. It was revised because of the change in the law in 2015, but it's an easy read. It, it's kind of a fun read because we're not too um, kind to the Social Security Administration when we describe how they're processing and helping people. But one of the reasons you might want to read that is to learn about if you are divorced, it tells you about the benefits we just talked about, but it also tells you about whether or not it will behoove you to get remarried and when you might want to get remarried, because that comes up with that question comes up when we're talking about Social Security and divorce. Let's say you're 63 and you're collecting a pretty good sized divorce spousal benefit because maybe you didn't have much of an earnings history. Maybe you stayed at home and watched the kids and your husband was a high earner and it was just more economical for you to stay home with the children than to go out and hire an au pair and get a low paying job. So anyway, you have a low earnings history and the divorce spousal benefit is significant. But if you get remarried, it's going to go away. So maybe you don't want to get remarried. Or if you are remarried, maybe you want to get divorced. Maybe you remarried at 50. Now you're 62. Well, you could get divorced and start collecting on your ex as a divorced uh, spouse, assuming again that your own benefit, retirement benefit, was small relative to the uh, divorce spousal benefit. Another point is that while you cannot collect a divorce spousal benefit if you remarry, you can collect a divorce spousal benefit. Uh, sorry, you can collect a divorce widow or widower benefit if you remarry, but you have to wait till age 60 in order for you to be able to do that. So for people that remarry after age 60, they can then still collect on their ex when their ex dies, or if their ex has already died, they can collect on their ex. But if that ex is still alive, they cannot if they remarry. They cannot collect if they're remarried. So if you think about this, Sean, it's, it's a pretty nasty treatment of divorced uh, divorcees. And it was set into place at a time where men earned a whole lot more than women. That's still, men still earn more than women on average in the U.S., 
but the differential is smaller. But just think about it. Back then, these men who decided Social Security rules decided was that, gee, if my wife works walks out on me before 10 years, I'm going to screw her. I'm going to say, hey, no Social Security benefits for you. So this was punishment imposed on women who left their husbands. I'm quite convinced this is where it came from. Male chauvinism at play. And then if you think about why it is that they're going to force uh, somebody to wait till 60 to remarry before they can get widower or widower benefits on their ex, again, it's a form of punishment. If my ex-wife marries when she's still young and attractive, I'm just putting words into their mouths here. This I wasn't there when they wrote this, but this is what I conjecture. I'm going to punish her. And because it's, you know, if you think about it, why is 10 years some natural number? If we were setting this system up from scratch in modern society today, would we decide that somebody who gets divorced after nine years is an ineligible to collect benefits, but somebody who gets divorced after 10 years is? No, I don't think so. I think we'd say from day one, if the husband is out working and the wife is at home watching the kids, the wife should be entitled to something. We'd split the account so they both have an equal size benefit in retirement. While they're still together, they get equal credits during that period. So a lot of what you see in Social Security divorce rules are really the, the result of sexism. And uh, I think there's probably 10 or 15 things I could uh, that I've written about in a column. I'm not sure exactly when I wrote it, but if you Googled my last name, Kotlikoff, and Social Security and sexism, it would probably come up. There's a long list of provisions that are, I think, a reflection of just sexism. I think that's fascinating. And, and what I'll do in the show notes is I will include a link to that article so people can find it easily. So, Larry, one more time. This was great information, really helpful, uh, an extraordinary amount for people to think about. What are the, the resources, the best places for people to learn more? And why don't you give out the software one more time? Okay, so the software is MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. Again, MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. It's $40, and just go to that site, buy it, and use it, and it will give you uh, best suggestions for maximizing your lifetime benefits, regardless of whether you're married or divorced, disabled, whatever your situation is, grandfathered, not grandfathered. Then another good source to get general knowledge is this book, that you can probably get from Amazon or the local bookstore. Well, forget Amazon. Let's better use use the local bookstore. They need your money more than Amazon. It probably costs 15 bucks in the local bookstore, and it's called Get What's Yours, The Revised Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. And the authors are myself, Larry Lawrence Kotlikoff, Paul Solomon, S-O-L-M-A-N. He's a PBS NewsHour economics correspondent. And Phil Muller, he's a longstanding personal finance columnist, M-O-E-L-L, let's see, M-O-E-L-L-E-R, Phil Muller. And those two tools will put you in good shape for dealing with Social Security. You do not, in general, want to be asking questions of Social Security because I think that about half the time you get the wrong answer from Social Security. You mean the agency? From the agency, from talking to them on the phone or going to the office. I've heard and written about so many horror stories It's truly unbelievable, but we're talking about one of the most complicated bureaucracies in the world. There's 2,728 rules. There's hundreds of thousands of rules about those basic rules in their program operating manual system. The staff are poorly trained, uh, underpaid. A lot of them are new. They're overworked. There's too many people. They're they're under under finances and as a bureaucracy, so they can't hire enough people. And they're they tend to be too often very arrogant. Gee, I know the answer. You don't. This is it. Goodbye. And I've I've called up on behalf of people on occasion and had somebody yell at me for half an hour. And I'd say, well, look, I just want to make sure I've got your name spelled right because I'll be writing about you and PBS News Hours on their website tomorrow or on Forbes where I write. I just want to make sure I'm spelling your name right. You know, they hang up and then five minutes later they call back and they apologize. Oh, I double checked and I was wrong. You were right. After screaming at me for half an hour, telling me I was wrong. Wow. Well, Larry, 
a lot to say about a lot of things you have in there, but we're out of time for today. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Uh, my great pleasure. Thank you. We're almost done with the episode, but don't leave quite yet. Before you go, I want to make sure that you get the help you deserve. All you have to do is go to divorceandyourmoney.com. And the first thing that you do when you get there is sign up for the email list. You'll see a little box that says, get updates and tips. And I will send you exclusive articles, content, and information that you will not find anywhere else. And it gets to go directly to you. The second thing that you do is consider getting one-on-one financial coaching. Look, divorce attorneys are good, but attorneys are not financial experts, and they can make many financial mistakes. I mean, even in the last episode, did they explain these details to you? Did they even bring them up, consider them? And I understand, because finances are really, really complicated. That's why there's over 100 episodes explaining different financial concepts. And sometimes you get to the point where the general information in the podcast, while helpful, you have the question is, how does it apply to me? How does it apply to my situation, my life, and my divorce? And the only way to find out is to go for the one-on-one coaching sessions where I get to help you across the United States, whether you're in your California, Texas, Ohio, Illinois, Florida, New York, everywhere in between. We work by phone, email, and in person. All you have to do is click on the coaching tab and fill out a few short questions and we'll set up an introductory call to see if I can help you. The sooner you get started, the better. Even if you're still preparing financial information or waiting on your spouse to prepare financial information, we can help with that. Or if you're in the middle of negotiating and trying to decide what's right for you. Here's the deal, is once you've signed on the dotted line, you know, the mistakes today are pretty much permanent. And I don't want you to make costly mistakes during divorce. So be sure to consider the coaching and the sooner you get started, the better off you will be. Finally, on divorceandyourmoney.com, there's just a ton of great resources on there. You can subscribe to the podcast. And if you have iTunes, Leave a review, which helps other people discover this free information. I'm your host, Sean Lehman, MBA and Certified Divorce Financial Analyst. Thank you for listening. Take it up, take it over, take it out of control. Today I'm free, 